hello and welcome to episode 7 of the Ohioic Formula YouTube series. I'm Christian. Today we're going to talk about soy-based standard infant formulas. Soy formulas differ in several aspects from both breast milk and standard milk-based formulas which we discussed in episode 6 of this series. However, they are still considered to be standard products. The protein source in soy formulas is soy protein which comes from soybeans. Soy formulas are lactose free, so the carbohydrate source in soy formulas may be corn syrup solids, sucrose, maltodextrin, or a combination of sources. The fat source is generally vegetable oils. There are a couple of actual indications for soy formula. One is galactosemia. Galactosemia is the inability to metabolize galactose properly. We know from the last episode that galactose is one of the two sugars that makes up lactose. So, since soy formula is totally lactose free, it is a great option for babies with this medical diagnosis. Soy formula is also indicated for congenital lactase deficiency, which occurs when babies are born with the inability to break down lactose because their bodies just don't make enough lactase. This is very rare. Lastly, soy formula is indicated for vegan or some vegetarian families who don't consume dairy products. However, a lot of parents and physicians choose soy formula outside of these conditions and that's okay. Lots of studies have been done around soy formula and it is considered safe for term infants and provides for normal growth and development. Despite this, some caregivers may still have concerns about high estrogen levels in their infants when consuming soy formula. So here's some background on that. Soy formulas contain a lot of compounds called isoflavones. Isoflavones are naturally occurring, biologically active compounds that are found almost exclusively in beans, especially soybeans. Isoflavones can act as phytoestrogens. Phyto means plants, and estrogen means that the compound has the ability to act like the hormone estrogen in the human body. So phytoestrogens are plant-based compounds that can have biological effects similar to estrogen in the body. Estrogen is important and needed for brain development, gene expression, and other body functions. Some studies have shown that estrogen may also protect against some adult diseases such as heart disease and some cancers. Estrogen has a much bigger role in women than men, especially during puberty, but both men and women's bodies require and make some estrogen. Estrogen is produced in somewhat higher levels in mothers during pregnancy, and is also found in breast milk, although in low quantities. Soy products are good for all of us. The concerns related to soy formula come from the fact that younger infants only consume formula, so this means that a lot of phytoestrogens are being consumed. Some caregivers worry that this could lead to negative effects in development of several important functions of the body. However, no conclusive evidence shows that soy formulas negatively affect development, reproduction, endocrine, or other systems functions. That being said, soy formula is contraindicated in a couple of situations. One is for preterm infants. Soy formulas should not be used for preterm infants because it could lead to inadequate bone mineralization in preemies, which can then lead to osteopenia. Also, infants with cow's milk protein allergy or intestinal issues or inflammation related to cow's milk protein should not be given soy formula. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, babies with cow's milk protein allergy have a 10 to 14% chance of also having a soy protein allergy. If the intestine is inflamed or injured in some way due to cow's milk protein allergy, it will also be sensitive to soy proteins and could potentially cause more issues. The best choice for either of those situations is to try an extensively hydrolyzed protein or amino acid based formula. In some cases, it might just need to be for a short time until the gut is healed and then soy formula could be trialed. We'll talk more about hydrolyzed and amino acid based formulas in a later video. The current Ohio Wix standard soy based product is Gerber Good Start Soy. It is important to note that Gerber Good Start Soy is the only one of Ohio Wix contract standard products that is kosher or halal at this time. The other two popular name brand soy formulas are Similac Isomil and Infamil Pro Sobe. That's it for today, everyone. I hope you found this video helpful. There are some links to reference articles in the bio that go into a lot more information if you're interested in reviewing them. 
Stay tuned for the next video where we will continue our discussion about standard formulas and focus on low lactose formulas. Thanks for watching and stay healthy, Ohio.